This is example 2, SOLIDWORKS assembly files. Now with our assembly file open from our previous example, let's take a look over at the feature tree. The feature tree is found on the left hand side and we can hide it by simply selecting those areas and that's going to increase our graphics area. So if we just simply select those arrows we can hide the feature tree if we so choose to increase the size of our graphics area. Now what does the feature tree do? The feature tree holds the information or history of how the file has been created. And in the case of an assembly file, it contains a list of each of the individual parts or even sub-assemblies, that's an assembly made up of other parts or possibly even other sub-assemblies within our assembly. And you'll see that to expand each of those parts or assemblies I simply select the plus icon next to the part or assembly and the minus icon will reduce or collapse that on the feature tree. Now it is important to note that the SOLIDWORKS assembly file simply gathers the information as to how the various parts and other assemblies fit together. And it's not the solid geometry itself. I could liken it to me telling you to put together this toy dump truck without giving you any of the pieces. If I didn't give you the body or the wheels or the hub or the axle, there's no way you could put that dump truck together. That's similar to how the assembly file works. It's simply the instructions on how to put the file together, put the various parts together. It also captures the information on how those parts relate to each other dynamically. For example, if I were to tip that bucket, this assembly file has captured the information on how those parts relate together. So how does SOLIDWORKS capture that information? How does a parametric solid modeling package capture the information as to how parts and assemblies fit together? And that's done with a series of mates. Mates are simply used to define how parts, very simply stated, mate together. Now in our lesson on assemblies we will expand further on how to create mates and create assemblies, but for this lesson we simply want to understand that assembly files again simply bring parts together and relate them together. We will look at how we manipulate our assembly file though. You saw me tip that dump box back and all I did to tip that dump box back was simply select a portion of the box and since the mates allow movement I can move that by selecting and holding within the constraints of the mates that were created. I could also spin my wheels if I select the wheel I could rotate my wheel. You can see that the mates for the wheels also show that when one wheel moves the other wheel will move as well. And you may have noticed that as I tipped my dump box I had a dynamic shadow. If you did not have a dynamic shadow you can simply do that by selecting our heads up view toolbar and toggling shadows either off or on. Now at times within your assembly you may find the need to either hide a component or make a component transparent so that you can see through it. I'm going to show you how to do both those functions within this example. It's very simple, just select the part you want to hide or make transparent and you can select anywhere on that part. And when your context toolbar appears, we could select hide component or change transparency. Now I also could have accessed those commands by right clicking it on the feature tree and again in the context toolbar 
I could select hide component. For the top cab, I'm going to select transparent. And you'll see the transparent slightly different. I simply make that part transparent, although it's still showing. I'm going to go ahead and hide a few more parts. And now show the various ways to show those parts. One way would be to simply select it on the feature tree, right click and select show component instead of hide component. And the other option would be to select show hidden components. Now what show hidden components did is toggle between the components that are hidden and the components that are not hidden. So let's go ahead and show all our components from our feature manager here. And lastly, we want to change the transparency of this top cab back. So we could either select it in the graphics area and select change transparency, or we could select it on the feature tree and select change transparency. Either way, we've returned that file to an opaque file. Now that concludes our brief introduction to assembly files. We can take a few minutes to try hiding and showing some of the parts and assemblies within that assembly file, as well as tipping the dump box and rotating the tires. It's rather simple, but it's an easy way to begin to familiarize yourself with the interface. I trust this was an informative help, and when you're complete, you can move on to example three, where we'll look in depth at part files.